Hello, hello. We're just waiting a few moments here uh, for everyone to come on. If you are just joining, um, go ahead and invite uh, your friends, your loved ones to join in on the Bible study. Um, and also say hi so I can know who you are, where you're from. Um, that would be a great, 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 great start. Um, and so, yeah, we're just going to kind of hang out and wait for a few moments because it's just now 8 o'clock. And so, you know, um, sometimes we're running a little bit behind. Um, so, yes, go ahead and invite and like and share um, so we can have a, a nice little uh, study here. I'm so excited about the Breakout Series. Hi, Patricia. How are you? I'm just so excited about this um, breakout series. It has just been blessing my entire soul. <laughs> um, it has just been like, oh my gosh. Okay, Lord. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Um, so um, if you're just joining on, go ahead and say hi. Let us know where you're from. And we will get started here um, shortly. Um, so yes, 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 yes. Uh, we want to invite those folks to come on. Um, I'm just looking at all my notes here. And then we're going to get started here really quickly. But I'm telling you, this thing has blessed my entire your soul. Um, breaking out, um, that's something that, you know, is just really strong. Um, breaking out, uh, you know, you always hear breakthrough, but you have to break out in order to experience breakthrough. So we're going to talk about that tonight. I'm super excited. Um, you know, it's one of those things when you've been studying and it's so good to you. You'd be like, oh my God, this is so good. So yes, 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 yes. So we're on, we're live here. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. It's 8.02. So we're going to get started. And... Yes, I'm um, super excited too. Also about the Flawless by God's Design Conference that's coming up. Um, yes, it's, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Um, I'm wearing my Flawless gear uh, from last year. We had the hats and they were such a popular uh, item. We're going to bring those things back. Um, so yay, yay, yay um, about that. So let's get started. Um, and so I'm super excited again. Like, share, uh, chime in, let everyone know uh, that we're here. And let me see, make sure I get everything adjusted. I don't want to close out, but it looks like we're good. Okay. So, uh, break out the psycho. And if you've been following, uh, we have, um, this is part two of the series. So you really do need to go back. Hello. Hello. How are you? Um, you really need to go back, um, to part one. It is on my YouTube channel. Um, and then it's also on the Facebook replays. Uh, you can watch that because you, these principles, these biblical principles, uh, this revelation that God is bringing into our lives, he's showing us how to break out to get breakthrough. Um, there's cycles of ruts, um, I mean, I've experienced them in my own life. Um, you know, the word is not, I'm not above the word. The word hits me first. Um, and you just really need to just break out of the cycle. So we're super excited about this series. So if you have not, take the time, share, invite your friends to watch the video um, because you know what happens. You get your breakthrough and then they start, girl, pray for me. Well, yeah, here's the tools. Here's the tools. Go through the steps and you can experience breakthrough too. So again, I'm super excited. So this particular uh, study, we're going to focus on breaking out of the psycho um, and we're going to go through a couple of steps um, to get the breakthrough or the breakout that we're looking for. Um, so if you're just joining on, go ahead and say hi so I can know you're there and uh, share and invite. But we're going to go in. So one of the things about breaking out of a psycho is we must understand God's divine instructions. 
And a lot of times when we're going through things, um, all the scriptures that we were quote and yell at and shout in church go out the window. Um, we're just at that point trying to survive. And so what God is trying to get us out of is survival mode into purpose mode. And that's with survival mode, all you're doing is bracing for impact. You never have a solution. Uh, there's never no real uh, problems being solved. You're just surviving the impact. And God doesn't call for us to survive the impact. What he really wants is for us to have purpose. He wants us to be victorious. He wants us to um, conquer the enemy. Um, you know, I don't want to just settle for, oh, we won the battle. No, I want to win the war. Um, and so God has set his word up so perfectly. Um, that he has it encrypted everything that we need to actually break out of the cycle and see breakthrough. And so one of the things that we need to do is we need to follow the guidelines. And so we all uh, have promises uh, for God. I, I'll never forget my first time buying my first car. I was so excited that I was like, oh my God, my first car Without my parents, I'm doing this thing, but I didn't follow the guidelines or I didn't read the fine print. And I didn't realize that my interest rate was way too high and that, yeah, the car was like $5,000, but by the time I drove off the lot, it was like $13,000 because of the interest. I forgot to read the guidelines or the fine print. And so therefore I was able to be uh, robbed of what I thought was a blessing and ended up turning into a, a, a strain or a curse or a hardship. And that's not what God wants for us. And so we must follow the guidelines. You must follow the guidelines. So we all have a promise from God, right? And I know some of us are um, in prophetic ministries. I thank God for the ministry that I'm in. Uh, my apostle is amazing um, and he speaks into our lives. So we experience that prophetic. So some might say, I have a promise from God and, I, I, and it was given to me prophetically. Um, or maybe you're on and you're saying, well, you know, I don't, I haven't experienced a prophetic word per se, but we can go to the scriptures. The scriptures hold a volume of promises for us. They hold things like, um, he's a present help in the time of trouble. Um, you know, by his stripes, we were healed. Um, we have, uh, if you call upon the Lord, he will answer. All of those things are promises from God. Um, but what happens is, uh, oh, and this is my favorite one. Jeremiah 15, 21, I will deliver you out of the hands of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. These are all promises that God has for us. So when you're going through something, you can rely on those things. But what happens is we get so caught up on the actual promise that we bypass the fine print or the guidelines to get the blessing. See, we all know that scripture, which is very, very popular in church, um, it is, um, I'm the head, you know, God will make you the head and not the tail. Um, you're the lender and not the borrower. We will shout on that. Uh, we will praise dance on that. We will do backflips, high five our neighbors, uh, chess, but we'll get very celebratory. Um, but we forget to read the fine print or the guidelines to getting access to that promise. And so the children of Israel had that promise, but there were some guidelines that they had to follow in order to unlock that purpose for them. So they were in a cycle of poverty. They were in a cycle of strain. They were in a cycle of hardship, but it took them following the guidelines in order to unlock what God was trying to do for them. And so what was the guidelines? When you read in Deuteronomy where that promise is, God begins to tell them, listen, before I make you the head and not the tail, I need you to serve no other God. I need you not to mix and mingle. I need you to do X, Y, and Z. God had guidelines lines in order to unlock the promise. And so if we're talking about breakout for breakthrough, we must step back and say, have I been following the guidelines that God has uh, put on my promise? Have I been following the instructions? And we don't really hear um, in, mo in many spaces, we don't take people back to those basics of, you know what, what did God say? People will call and ask for prayer, and it's like, well, what did God tell you? Well, why don't you believe that? Well, why don't you follow through with that? That's a hard thing because we want to jump right to the promise. We want to jump right to the to the uh, the the fanfare of it. And the, girl, you heard what God said He was gonna do for me, girl. You yeah, uh, you know God is doing big things, and I'm about to be jobs and and uh, and you, I got raises and I got promotions. And but God saying there is guidelines that you must adhere to. And so when we, when we do that, 
um, God says, okay, now I can trust you with more. Because when you, uh, <laughs> don't make me laugh. Uh, God says, I can trust you with more. And you have to realize when God gave that promise and he says that you're the head and not the tail for them to get access, they had to, um, you know, serve him. He said, don't put any other gods before me. He says, when you get over there, don't you mix and mingle. He said, when you get over there, I want you to make sure that you make me God. Build an altar to me. Don't forget me. Hold fast to my commandments. Remember that I was the God who brought you up out of Egypt. Those were all the following the guide. Those were all the guidelines to access the promise. And so then... You must ask yourself, why would God have to tell them you're the head and not the tail if they were already the head? And I'm going to just let that marinate. Why would God ask them to be the head? I'm, I'm going to make you the head. Why would God tell them that? I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. I'll make you the lender and not the borrower. This is the recipe for breakthrough. I'm trying to help somebody. This is the recipe. This is the formula. It's not hidden. It's very much so alive in God's scriptures. It's there, but we must follow the guidelines. If you're following along, go ahead and type in the comments, follow the guidelines. And in that, what God was telling them is, I know you're not the head now, but in order to break out of this cycle of being the tail, Serving the Egyptians, having other nations uh, uh, look at you as weak. I'm going to break you out of this cycle of poverty. I'm going to break you out of this cycle of shame. I'm going to break you out of this cycle of turmoil. I'm getting ready to break you out of the cycle of destitute. I'm getting ready to break you out of the cycle. Hey, I'm getting ready to break you out of the cycles of loneliness. I'm getting ready to break you out of the cycles of people complaining, saying, your God must not be real because look at the situation you're in. God was saying all of that to the children of Israel when he said, I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. He was speaking purpose and he was showing them how they were going to break the cycle of those things in order to experience breakthrough. We don't just want breakthrough. We want to experience. We want it to be manifested to where it's something we're experiencing. And God is saying that he's trying to get you to break the cycle to break out of the cycle to experience breakthrough by following the god lines i see you i love it the guidelines and so for them when god said i'm going to make you the head and not the tail god is speaking to them he's speaking into their spirit he's speaking into their soul he's saying this is what i'm getting ready to do for you also i'm going to make you the lender and not the borrower all this borrowing that you're doing living in other people's lands uh walking through the wilderness uh being vagabonds going from this mountain to this space to that space i'm getting ready to give you a land that's your own um and so then you'll be able to be the lender no longer the borrower. And God is saying, I'm getting ready to bring you into your own space. I'm getting ready to bring you into your own business. I'm getting ready to bring you into your own marriage. I'm getting ready to bring you into your own uh, financial stability. I'm getting ready to bring you into your own deliverance. Hey, I'm getting ready to bring you to your own breakthrough. But here's the prerequisites. Here's what you have to do. And when you look and read Deuteronomy in its entirety, God tells them, I'm going to do all of these things for you. All I need for you to do is to trust me. Don't put no other God before me and believe on me as the scriptures have said. That is so crucial because just uh, dealing in ministry, you get so many people who confess to be Christians. But when it calls time, when it comes time for them to live or stand on the word of God, they become uh, very weak. They become uh, very disturbed. They become very um, perplexed as if the scripture lacks power. And God is saying that's that my word is power. My word is me. And so this is what we must understand. We must follow the guidelines in order to get the breakthrough. God is trying to do something and we have to let him do it and we have to follow his instructions. Now, I'm reminded of a scripture. <laughs> oh, I see Nina. You make me laugh. Hi, mom. I had, sorry, I had to pause and say hi to, to Nina's mom. Um, um, so in order to get the, to break out of the cycle, to experience breakthrough, 
That's what we want to do. We want to experience breakthrough. We don't want to confess it. We don't want to just talk about it. Uh, we don't want it to come today and leave tomorrow. No, we want to live in that experience. That, that needs to be our everyday thing, walking in breakthrough. And so what we must do, I'm reminded of the scripture, um, Genesis chapter 12. And I'm going to read that. I got my Bible, my old school. I'm old school. And this is God speaking to Abraham, Genesis chapter 12. And I'll post the scriptures um, in, in the uh, comments. So for those who want to go back and study. But um, Genesis 12, this is the Lord speaking to Abraham. He says, now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. I, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. Now, this is such a very familiar passage. And again, we shout on that end part, honey, God's going to bless those who bless me. God's going to curse those who curse me. God said he's going to make me a great nation. God said he's going to heal my body. God said he's going to make a way. God said I'm getting married. 2018 is my year. I'm starting multiple businesses. We, we go to that end promise, but we bypass, rush, skip through, skim over the guidelines that were there. And I'm going to read you the guidelines because we read it so quick, you probably missed it. 12 and 1, it says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house. Right there. Get out. He told Abraham, Get out. Step out. Step out of your comfort zone. Step out of familiarity. Step out of the place where everybody knows your name. Step out of the place where you feel you thrive the best because you already know how to navigate in that area or in that environment or in, on that platform or in that arena or in that relationship. God says, God told Ab Abram, come out of your country. And by him coming out, then God says, I will show you a land that I will bless you. I will prosper you. I will make you father of many nations. I, I'm going to bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you. But the guidelines were for him to leave his comfort zone was for him to leave his familiarity, for him to leave the people who were probably going to say, you know what, Abraham, we just love you. No matter what God said, we, we still going to work with you. We don't worry about it and was going to pat him on the back. Sometimes um, it's not that always that family is hating on you or your friends are hating on you or your circle that you're in now that God is calling you out of or, or working in jealousy or envy. Some of the times they're too comfortable. Mm hmm. I said that sometimes our family will pat us on the back and coddle us and, and, and cuddle us and they will not allow us to be. They won't push us to our max potential. Got to tell us to step out and they'll say, well, baby, you know, you really don't have a lot of money for that. So maybe you should use wisdom because they do love us because they do care. But sometimes that can even be a blockage and keep us in this cycle of, of comfort, the cycle of complacency, a cycle of settling because we're in a in a in a in an environment that's just coddling us not pushing us out to our full potential so the guidelines for Abraham was for him to come out from his countrymen come out from his um, place of comfort his family it said his country and his family and I will show you and I will lead you to a place where you shall go now what Abraham I'm sure he got excited I'm sure he shouted a little bit on that but then we must look at, we must go to Genesis. <laughs> and this is so funny because we do it all the time. Um, I remember, uh, you know, God was saying he was going to uh, bless me uh, and I was going to get married, uh, remarried again. I had already been married before. And, um, you know, I didn't want any more children um, after my two girls. I was pretty much cool on kids, um, but I did want to get remarried. And the word of the Lord came to me, you're going to not only uh, get remarried, but you're going to have another kid. And I was like, uh, hold on, wait, no, cut. Um, I'll take the marriage, but I don't want 
that other stuff you you know and I didn't want to take what it took to become a, a wife I didn't want to have to go through that healing process I didn't want to have to uh, start establishing myself again and start preparing for what God said for me so what I did was I just tried to you know make up my own little stuff and put stuff together and work things out on my own and God was like that's not what I told you and most of us on this call God has told you specific instructions even if it's be quiet for this season, even if it's trust me in this season, even if it's I know you're going through the pain, but I need you to know I'm with you and I'm going to bring you out. And we get so frazzled. We just want to get to the I just want to be to the healed part. I just want to be to the blessed part. I just want to be to the breakthrough part. I don't want to have to follow the guidelines. I don't want to have to be responsible. And that's not that's why we see so many in the church suffering. That's why we see, yep, I said it. That's why we see so many going through the cycle of the same thing over the same thing over the same thing year after year. They're still depressed. Year after year, their 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 ideas don't seem to come to fruition. Year after year, they're broke. Year after year, they're kind of going through. It's a cycle. They're in a relationship, out of a relationship, in a relationship, out of a relationship. They're trusting. They're going through betrayal. It's cycles and cycles and cycles. But God is saying, I need you to press pause on trying to get to the breakthrough. I want you to experience the breakthrough by breaking out of the cycle. And so we're going to follow the guidelines. So if you're on and you're just getting on, go ahead and say break out, break out. Type in the comments, break out, break out, because we're going to break out of this thing. If we have to tell our emotions to be quiet, if we have to tell uh, our attitudes and put our attitudes in check, if we have to step out into different circles and arenas uh, to partner with different people and that's out of our comfort zone, we're going to break out to experience breakthrough. And so, like I said with Abraham, now we know what the word of the Lord said to Abraham. It said to come out from your country, leave your father's house, leave your family members, leave everybody. That was the instructions in order for him to get the breakthrough or the breakout or the promise, right? But then we go to Genesis 13 and Lot his nephew is with him. Wait a minute. How in the world are you with Abraham? When we clearly read in Genesis 12 and 1, God says, leave all those Negroes. Leave all of them. Leave every last one of them. Don't take nobody. Don't take nothing that's familiar. Don't take nothing that resembles home. I'm taking you to a new land, a new place, a new area, a new platform, a new level of influence, new healing, new life, new emotions, new joy, new peace, new hope. And you can't bring nothing from where the, the place of where you've been. And a lot of times we don't want to leave the place where we've been. We're so in love with uh, the situation we're in now, even though we don't like it. It's become so familiar and comfortable. We can navigate through it. We understand it. We refuse and reject breakthrough. Ooh, that right there is hitting me. We refuse and reject breakthrough because we will refuse to break out because this place is familiar. Now, we must be very clear. Abram, I'm calling him Abraham, but his name was Abram by this time, Genesis 12. He has not been renamed to Abraham, which is father of many nations. He is Abram. God is taking him somewhere. He has not experienced his breakthrough yet, but God has made him a promise that he will get, uh, he will be the father of many nations if he adheres to these set of instructions. But then we read in Genesis 13 and Lot is there. Now Lot is Abram's nephew. And I could imagine the situation that, you know, Lot's probably listening in as Abraham's expressing how y'all I'm packing. I got to go. I got to get up out of here. Why Abram What's going on? Where are you going? I don't know. The Lord's going to show me where I'm going. And I know he's going to bless me. And he already said he's going to make me the father of many nations, but I got to go. I'll see y'all. And I can see Lot like, Hey, you're not about to leave me out. I'm coming with you. I'm coming with you. I'm coming with you. I'm coming with you. And instead of Abraham saying, no, 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 I love you, but you can't come with me. No shade. I'm not mad. It's not because I think you're a hater. It's not because I think you're jealous of me. None of that. You're just not a part of the guideline. God was very clear. 
And sometimes God is telling you to be quiet and you're so quick to speak. You're so quick to tell everybody about what God is doing in your life. And some people are not for you. They're, they're plotting against you and you're just giving the enemy all the plans. You're just giving the enemy everything. And God's like, mm, you can't take everybody on this journey with you. You cannot, you cannot do that. So Abraham is being prepared to be the father of many nations, but God called him to be a father not an uncle. Abraham had Lot with him and it became an issue. So our second point after we have to follow the guidelines of the promise of God, we cannot settle for promise substitutes. We cannot settle for promise substitutes. We can't do it. And we do it Sometimes not even knowing that we're doing it. We cannot settle for promised substitutes. Tamara, what do you mean by that? Let's consider Hannah. Um, I, one of my favorite women in the Bible, Hannah. When she's crying about not being able to give birth to a baby, um, to her own son, and she has to deal with Penina and all her little uh, shade that she was throwing, you know, having all those baby showers and all those babies and Hannah has to endure. Hannah's husband's response to her was, am I not more than two sons for you? Like, isn't my love enough? He wanted to be a promised substitute. When God did not promise her the love of her husband, God promised her a child. And so she held on to that thing. I can imagine her like I would do, rolling my eyes when he said, you're going to be, no, you. I don't accept a promised substitute. Another substitute that we will see in the Bible is when the children of Israel saying, we want a king. We want a king. We know we have God as our king, but we want a king like everybody else. We want somebody that we can call our king of our nation. We don't want just God, a God that we can't see. We want a king. So God gave them Saul and we all know what happened to Saul. Anytime you try to do a promise substitute, it will always bring strife. It will always bring contention. It will always bring um, um, confusion. Anytime you try to do a promise substitute, you will always have strife, contention, and confusion. Strife, contention, and confusion is what you will have when you try to do a promise substitute. And in this case, Lot is a substitute for an Isaac that was not even born but was coming. Yeah, I felt that. Lot was, Abraham made Lot a substitute for the promise that was coming. Lot was not the son. He was a family member and he was in the family, but he was not the promise. And so Abraham loved Lot and nurtured Lot and uh, allowed uh, Lot to partake of the same prosperity that Abram had experienced as if he was a son. But Lot was not the promise. And my question to you is, what are you trying to substitute for your promise? And I'm a pause. What are you trying to substitute for your promise? Um, some of us, we have different ways that we try to self-medicate is what the, the medical uh, terminology would use. Uh, psychologists would use. Are you self-medicating? Are you trying to ease the pain? Are you settling somewhere? And instead of saying, you know, God told you you was going to be on national TV, um, but you're settling somewhere along the line. You know, God said you were going to be married, um, but you're with somebody, uh, you know, who's not your husband. Uh, God said that he was going to deliver you. God said that he was going to breathe that depression up off of you. And the only time you really feel happy is when you're shopping, but then you're depressed again because you spent all your money. You know, we have to look at that. We have to look at that. What is your promise substitute? And so if you're experiencing strife, because even when I was praying today, I felt so much contention, contention just fighting and, and strife and confusion. And God was like, that's because there's promised substitutes in the midst. And anytime you have promised substitutes in the midst, you must beware because a promised substitute will always birth strife, contention, and confusion. You don't believe me? Let's go further down the line with Abraham when Sarah says, you know what? I can't have Isaac. So how about you take my maidservant Haggai and have a baby? What did it produce? Contention between Sarah and Haggai strife because Sarah was distressed out about the whole situation and confusion because Ishmael was walking around like he was the promise but he wasn't so they didn't know who was the head who to look for anytime you try to do a promise substitute it will always birth and produce strife 
contention and confusion. Now, what I'm, uh, what's so funny is when Lot was there, so God takes Lot and he tells, um, he tells Abram, well, actually, I'm so sorry. Their uh, herdsmen start fighting in Genesis 13 because they're both growing and there's contention among the ranks. And so now Abram is like, wait, see, I shouldn't even brought you. How about this? You pick a land, I'll pick you in whichever land you pick, I'll go the other way. And Lot picks what he thought was the best. But what happens is you cannot, you cannot with a promised substitute, be satisfied. If you want to break out of the cycle, what are you saying? Well, if God doesn't bless me, I'm okay with this. That's a promised substitute. If God promised you healing, we don't accept nothing else but healing. If God promised us a breakthrough, if God promised us deliverance from addiction, if God promised us deliverance from our hangups, our insecurities, our own personal issues, if God promised that, we can't do promise substitutes and say, well, you know what? I'll just stop believing for the promise and that'll make me feel better because then I won't have to feel disappointment. No, that's called a promise substitute. And this is why you're going through what you're going through through because God is saying you can never fulfill and never be satisfied with the promise substitute. And so it is very imperative that we follow the guidelines and that we too, the second thing is that we do not settle for promise substitutes. Now here's the thing, the Bible in uh, Genesis 13, what I loved about this is it says that Abraham was coming into this new land and it says that Abraham built an altar and that Abraham prayed to the Lord. When Lot came in the land, he just came in the land. The Bible doesn't make any reference to him paying homage to God, thanking God for opportunity, thanking God for the blessing. And here's the other thing that you cannot do. If you want to see break out and you want to experience breakthrough, what you did to get the promise, you must continue to do. If you were fasting and praying and believing God and quoting scriptures and praising him through the mist, when you start seeing some signs of breakthrough, you can't back up off of that thing and be like, well, you know, um, I was, you know, now I'm here or I see things breaking up. So now let me take the reins. No, 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 ma'am. No, sir. If you started with worship, you started with prayer, you started with praise, baby, you got to continue. So as you're entering into those different promised lands and God is increasing you and he's enlarging your territory and he's enlarging your stake you keep that same praise you keep that same level of dedication because how many times have you have seen um i've seen it in my own um ex i've experienced it in my own circle where you see people and it's like wow god is really blessing them but then you don't see him at church as much you don't see him in their word their conversation has even changed their language has even changed they're on this you know well you know girl i do me and you know it's because of who i know and i have all these followers like their language has changed and before they were like honey i just want to serve god honey i just want to do what god told me to do their language has changed why because they felt like i no longer have to have that commitment commitment to God the way I did before. I am, uh, uh, I own several businesses and for God I live, for God I die. My language cannot change. My habit that I had to get me to the breakthrough, I can't alter that once I think like, okay, I've arrived. God requires more. To much is given, much is required. So when you start seeing, oh, okay, I'm feeling better in my body. Oh, okay, I got it going on. I feel, oh, and so now you don't pray as much? Now you don't, you're not as committed. People don't even know you saved on your job. And I know sometimes you just can't go around and saying Jesus, 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 Jesus. But what you can do is let your life speak. The integrity that you have, the, the character that you have, the honesty that you have, the humility that you have, your language speaks. And this is how I know, this is why God called Abram to be Abraham, because not only did Abraham build that altar, and made a place and a space for God. Look, look at the humility. Abraham is the one with the promise, but he allowed Lot to pick the land he wanted. Think about that. Abraham is the one with the promise, but he humbly bows out to Lot and say, I don't want to fight. I don't want to argue. Wherever you go, I'll go the opposite way. Now that's how you experience breakout.
When you are so confident in your God that you know that it don't matter if somebody picked the best land, because I'm going to tell you, Lot was carnal. And Lot looked and said, I'm going to pick the one with the greenest grass. I'm going to pick the one that I look like I'm going to be able to thrive better than Abraham, because you have those people out there. I'm going to give you the shady deal, and I'm going to do what's best for me. I'm only looking out for me. I'm not looking out for my uncle. I'm not looking out for him. I'm going to do what's best for me. But even in the midst of that, what we must understand in order to break out to experience breakthrough, we cannot be concerned about what people do or don't do for us. Mm, that's a word. We cannot be concerned about what people do or don't do for us. We must have the confidence in the Lord our God that what's for me is for me. If you look to, if you go and pick the best land, honey, God will build me an oasis in the desert. I am not worried. I am not concerned. I'm not uh, confused. I know what God said. I know what he spoke. And I know what he's going to do for me. So you can go ahead and pick the best of this. You can go ahead and have the better event. You can go ahead and have the uh, the better marriage or, or what you think, pick the better mate. You can go ahead and pick the better doctor. You can go ahead and get the better uh, makeup. You can get whatever you want better than me. I just know what God has for me is for me. And if, and if you think that you're putting me in a bad situation, you can never put God's children in a bad situation. We thrive in the midst of thorns. We thrive in the midst of deserts. We thrive against the odds. You can't put me in a bad situation, not when I have a promise. Uh, you can't do you you can set me up but it will not prosper because all things work together for the good for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose and I'm not going to forfeit what God has for me so that you can feel comfortable there's nothing that you can do so you don't have to worry about those who uh you feel are not on your team or you feel like uh you know they're separating from you and they want to leave you uh with the worst uh, you know, worst part of it, the worst land, like Lot did with Abram. Abraham said, don't worry. It's okay. Whatever land you want, you go there. Whatever land, I'll choose the opposite. And what happens, we all know the story of Lot and what happened to Lot and how Lot was running for his life by the end of it because he chose what looked appealing to the eye. But because of Abraham's humility to say, God, I'm not going to fight my own battles. I'm not going to argue with a lot in my life. And so some of you have been arguing with lots in your life, trying to fight for your land and fight for your promise and fight what God said has for you. You don't have to fight for what God says is yours. It's yours. And so if you're tired of fighting, I want you to go ahead and type in the comments, I'm breaking out. Go ahead. By faith, I'm breaking out. I'm breaking out of the cycle where I feel like I have to prove myself to people in order for my promise to be real. That day is over. You have to understand that what God promised you is for you. So if you want to experience breakthrough, let me tell you what throws the enemy off. Let me tell you what throws the enemy off. When you are unshakable on what God told you. When you are unshakable on what God told you. I'm going to say it again. You must be unshakable on what God told you. If God said he was going to deliver you, if God said he was going to heal your finances, if God said he was going to heal your soul, some of us have soul hurts. Um, uh, 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 you know, the hurts go so oh, so deep, they're affecting our soul. God made you promises. I mean, promises in his word. If you haven't heard someone audibly speak those promises to you, God has promises in his word for you. You have to be unshakable. Example. Jesus in the wilderness Jesus in the wilderness he didn't flinch at Satan and he didn't come back and say don't you know who I am I'm Jesus I'm this I'm that no he hit him with the promises of God and he followed the guidelines he said the Bible says the word says that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God so why are you trying to tempt me with stones Come again, Satan, because I know what bread I'm eating. And that's the bread that comes from the word of God. When he says, well, I can take you to this high pinnacle. And if you fall down, you know, uh, you know, you can save yourself. I'll give you everything. Jesus hit him back. Boom. With the word. So in our promise group, the promise, I have a, a Facebook group. It's a closed group. 
and it's called The Promised Life. And it's talking about, and we go into more depth about how to get those promised scriptures, how to fortify yourself, how to come against the enemy when he's trying to attack you from your promise. Uh, we deal with all of that in the promise group. So you have to request to be a member um, because it's only for those who are serious about going to another level, another dimension in their walk with God and experiencing breakthrough. Um, because I don't know about you, I want my prayer list to change. I want my prayer list to change. I want to see those things done, accomplished. I want to be able to rip that prayer list up, not because um, I'm, I've given up, but because God has answered my prayer. God says, if you call on me, I will surely answer. These are promises, so I'm not settling anymore. I'm, not, I'm no longer going to dumb myself down. I'm no longer going to question God. Mm. I'm no longer going to say, well, God, I don't even understand. Um, and so I'm going to give up. I'm going to change, like we said, and if you have not listened to part one of the breakout um, series, you need to go back. I have it on my YouTube channel um, and you need to listen to it over and over again. We talked about changing your language, changing your response to the situation. And so this time I want to go through the, the steps one more time. We want to one, follow the guidelines. Whatever God told you, there is a prerequisite to receiving that promise. I cannot um, be believing God for financial deliverance, but I don't have a budget. That's not going to happen. No, ma'am. No, sir. I cannot believe God to send me uh, a spouse when I'm, you know, having sex all over the place. I'm kind of living in your type of life. I'm not preparing myself. I'm not fixing my credit. Hello, somebody. Um, cause I've already told my sons, you can't marry anybody with bad credit. Um, <laughs> because that's a part of your promise. God said, we will are the head and not the tail. A part of that is in your credit. Um, so there's certain ways we have to live. If it's health that you're dealing with, you can't sit and eat a whole box of ding dongs and say, God said, I'm healed. No, you got to be going to the gym. You got to be exercising. You got to be working out and God will honor his word. It's not that he needs you. It's like, it's a partnership. God wants to partner with you in the breakthrough. A lot of times we want God to do everything and we want to sit back and just receive. But if we were created in God's image, hear me, because we're getting, God's getting ready to bring revelation. If we were created in his image, that means we are to act like him, do like him. And God is a God that creates. God never just sit back. It was only on the seventh day he rested from creation. All the other six days, God was diligently working to create what he had promised. And so if we are created in his image and we're supposed to do what he does, we have to, we must, it is a mandate when we get the promise from God and we want to experience the breakout, break in, out of the cycle of poverty, out of the cycle of depression, out of the cycle of sickness and disease, out of the cycle of stress and strain, out of the cycle of depression and heaviness and anger. If we want to break out of poverty, if we want to break out of those cycles, we must be willing to follow the guidelines and every promise has a guideline every word um i heard it you know i grew up in church i'm a church baby and the old saints used to say the promise is on condition and i know we don't like to hear that and it's not really popular in church because we want to serve the god that gives us everything with no no requirement we want to serve the God who just, he loves everybody and he does. We want to serve a God, but we want to mature in our Christianity. And especially for some of those of us who are on the, the, the live and we actually minister and empower and speak and give back. We have to show by example, our life has to uh, replicate what we preach. Our life has to replicate what we say. So we are whole, we are held to that standard. So God is saying, okay, follow my guidelines. The second thing we need to do is we cannot do promise substitutes. And I'm recapping for those of you who just got on, we're almost actually finished a little bit. We'll see what the Lord says, um, but we're recapping. Um, and so the second point is you cannot do settle for promise substitutes. When you settle for promise substitutes, you will produce strife contention and confusion in your situation. So if you are experiencing contention, if you're experiencing strife and confusion, there is a substitute somewhere. 
This, this is why uh, when your body senses something foreign in it, your cells go to attack it because it's like, uh-uh, this is something foreign. It, it, it's not right. It doesn't fit. It's the same thing with the promise of God. You cannot create an Ishmael and be okay with it in place of your Isaac. God won't allow it. It will be stressful. It will be contention. It won't work. It won't flow. It, you always, why won't it flow? God, why? maybe you got a promise substitute in there. The third thing, the third point we want to do to break out of the cycle, the third point and the final point is we need to be confident and, and humble enough to realize that even if somebody is giving us the worst end of the stick or the situation seems like it's worse or seem like we're not going to experience what God has for us, that it does not matter. Whatever God, whatever, what God has for you is for you. In the case with Lot, Lot reached out and was like, I'm going to get this land over here. It's greener. It's better. And Abraham said, dude, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm going to accept it because God can bless you where you are. You don't have to know those people to get what God has for you. You don't have to be, um, you know, rubbing elbows with these particular people to get your business off the ground. You don't have to um, been born in a different family to experience what God has for you. To experience the healing, you don't have to be some healthy person that runs marathon. You, mm -mm. God can give you breakthrough right where you are. He just needs you to trust him enough to follow the guidelines. He needs you to trust him enough to um, um, not uh, try to put in promise substitutes. And he needs you to trust him enough to know that wherever you are currently right now, I don't care how dry the situation is. I don't care how dry the situation is. I don't care how bleak the situation looks. You can prosper wherever God, wherever you are. God is not intimidated by the environment, the situation that you're in. And so I'm so, so grateful for the life. Um, and I'm praying that this bless you. And I just want us to just go ahead and say, break out, break out, break out, break out, break out. And this is, I'm doing these studies not to preach at you. No. Um, but God wants to teach us how to break out because remember God told Abraham, here was his guideline, leave your country, leave your family, leave everybody behind and I will take you to a land. And then I will bless you. I will curse those who curse you. I'll bless you. I'll make you father of many nations. He had that promise, but he brought lot with him. And God, there was contention because lot was the promised substitute. Lot was the nephew, not the son. And you can never substitute your promise for a nephew when God is promising you a son. And we must understand God did not call you to be like Abram. He did not call him to be the father of many nephews. He called him to be the father of many nations. And nations are birthed through sonship. And we must understand, hey, glory, we must understand that when God is speaking to us, we cannot settle and try to put our hands in it and try to map it out the way we think it should go. We need to follow the guidelines and trust God through the process. This is why we've been weak in the church. This is why we've been weak in our personal walk with life. I can honestly say when I was studying this, I repented like 20 million times. Um, and repentance is a good thing. Repentance is what brings you back into to, to the grace of God. It's, it's not something that you should run from. Um, it doesn't mean you're a filthy sinner. Um, you know, church do, do appeals that way. So sometimes people are afraid to even acknowledge that they have to repent. Um, but no, repentance is a good thing. And so uh, <laughs> I'm going to say type repent, <laughs> repent in the comments. Um, so what happens is when you repent, it's okay. I heard this word. I had to repent because I said, God, I was trying to do it one way when you were really wanting me to just wait and hold out to see what you were going to do. And when I waited and I shut my mouth and I humbled myself, I saw God open doors and other spaces. I saw God open doors in other arenas. I saw God open door people who were reaching out to me who I had never even met before all because I backed up and I said, God, I'm sorry. I've been trying. I want my breakthrough so bad. I want my breakthrough so bad that I'm trying to hustle to get it because I'm a, I will push. I am not a lazy person. Uh, I'm a little bit of a workaholic. I know me. I can, I can tell on myself. Um, I don't sleep or slumber. I'm almost like Jesus. Almost. I, I'm, I'm working. I'm working. Working. But sometimes that is a, 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 a bad thing. That's a bad thing when God 
and saying, I need you to rest and trust me. And Abraham did not fight with Lot. He did not fight with it. Some of you are fighting with your situation. Some of you are fighting with your issues. Hey, some of you are fighting with that loved one. Some of you are fighting with your health. Some of you are fighting with your finances. Some of you are fighting on your job, fighting in the marriage, fighting with the kids, fighting on the business, fighting to try to get your stuff off the ground, fighting, trying to make the right connections, fighting, fighting. You're contending, trying to, trying to win your breakthrough. And God was like, it ain't for you to win. I'm the Lord. I win. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to God. He is our champion. He's the one who makes us more than a conqueror. So sometimes we need to just step back and say, God, I trust you. I trust you. I'm not going to fight. And when I tell you, woo, I'm writing, <laughs> you'll see the testimonies that come out in the next book. Um, that'll be done. Hopefully uh, we're trying to get that thing done uh, by the conference, but the spaces that I relinquished and said, God, I'm not going to fight. I don't have to tell them that you sent me. You're going to tell them that you sent me. I don't have to try to open my own doors. You're going to open those doors. And guess what? You open door that no man can shut. That's what you do. So I'm super excited. And I hope that the series um, has been blessing you. Um, it's not a, a it's not all about feeling good. I don't want to just feel good. I don't know about you. I'm tired of just feeling good. I'm tired of just being who I'm encouraged just for three, four hours to pass and something happened and I lose my hope and I'm back down again and I'm feeling a little depressed and I'm feeling a little worried and I don't know what to do and I don't know what's going on. All of those things, those things can be over. You can break out of that cycle. You can break out of that cycle. You do not have to live beneath your privilege as a child of the most high God, but you do have to work. And now part of that work is obedience. What did he tell you? And whenever he told you, don't try to substitute it. And once you get to the place where you're like, okay, God, I'm not going to substitute. It's going to look like everybody else is prospering in their own way. And you're sitting here trying to trust God. Don't be fooled. Let them prosper in their own way. Be humble enough to know that where God has you is for you. So I hope this was a blessing uh, for you. Um, again, part one um, of the breakout series is uploaded onto the YouTube channel. Uh, the YouTube channel is Miss Tamara Ellison. Uh, social media, if you're not following me on Instagram, go ahead and follow me on Instagram um, at Miss Tamara Ellison um, or Facebook. Um, but I'm super excited. You notice, know ladies, I'm or gentlemen, we might have gentlemen. I'm wearing the flawless hat. It's probably backwards from the camera for you, but this is from our Flawless by God's Design Women's Conference. Um, last year we had these hats and we like sold out. So I cannot wait. Uh, September 29th, we will have the Flawless by God's Design Conference at the beautiful hotel, uh, Double Tree in Ontario. Um, Pre-sale tickets, registration is now open. Pre-sale tickets are only $40. So do not wait to the last minute and the price will go up or don't think that you're be able to purchase tickets out the door because I am expecting to be sold out. So we will be able to get your flawless hat. It'll be a constant reminder. Um, I get so many people, oh, I love your hat. I love your hat. And I'm thinking, you just don't know. This thing is speaking to me. I am flawless by God's design. His grace covers all my sins, all my mistakes. I can walk in breakthrough. I can walk in deliverance. I can walk in peace um, because I have been made flawless uh, by God's perfect design. So I hope to see you. Um, the information is on my Facebook page or you can go to my website at TamaraEllison.com um, and you can register. There's vendors opportunities there um, and it's just going to be a blessing when I tell you it's going to be an outpour of God but if there's anyone that's on I don't want to miss I want to pray with you pray for you uh, pray uh, touch and agree with you uh, via Facebook I would love to pray for you so you could go ahead and type in comments questions now at this time before we close out this live and um, and then I want to pray with you and pray for you um, that God's blessings will be on your life Amen. Amen. I see you. I see you. I see you. I can't wait. You're going to be flawless. And I'm telling you, you're going to rock your flawless gear. Um, we'll have some stuff there for you. Um, uh, praise and worship is always my favorite because I just love praise and worship. Um, and so I'll be there jumping, dancing, hollering, screaming, shouting um, because God is just that real. And we've got some powerful speakers uh, lined up for you. So I'm super, super excited.
Yes, I see you, Nina. You need prayer tonight. We're going to pray for you, my dear. We're going to pray for you. Anyone else, I, please, if you need prayer, go ahead and type it in. You don't have to type in what it's about. I don't want to, you know, expose you or, or, or you to put your uh, personal uh, business out there. But I definitely um, want to pray and touch and agree with you. Um, I hate I'll miss it. Oh, no. Come to Illinois. Okay, she said, come. Is that I-L? Is, is that Illinois? Okay, prayer for my mom, my daughter. Okay, okay, prayer. Yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I think that's it, come to Illinois. I would love to come to Illinois. I just left um, not too long ago. We were out there doing uh, the workshop, the Discovering the New Me. So uh, we definitely, we, we travel, uh, we do travel. Yes, please keep me lifted up in prayer, absolutely. Oh yes, my my um, dad's peeps are from the shy, so we love the shy. Yes, yes, healing. Yes, absolutely. The Bible says that by his stripes we are healed. He is the Lord that healeth thee. Um, and so yes, yes, yes. Your family, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and so I have a, another question. If we did a um, what they call a soaking or a prayer, um, not a prayer, but like a refreshing where it's worship music and we're just able to just worship God and sit and just receive from the Lord a download. Um, how many of y'all would come to that? We could do something like that. I'm really, really feeling that. And it'd be free too. It'd be free. It'd be free. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to pray with you. But would you come to that? Would you come to that? And I know it's a delay on the comments, so I can't really see. But we're going to pray. Father God, we just thank you. We ask, Lord God, that you see the prayer requests. You see uh, the folks that are on the Facebook Live and even those, Lord God, who will watch the replay. And... And they are in a space in their life where they're like, God, you know what? I just need more. I'm tired of this cycle. I'm tired of these situations. I'm tired of the cycle of sickness. I'm tired, God, of the cycle of depression. I'm tired of the cycle of struggle and lack. I'm tired of the, the cycle of strain and contention. I'm tired of the cycle of poverty and financial instability. I'm tired, God, of the cycle of uh, being betrayed and I feel I hear it in the spirit jealousy um, I'm tired of that cycle God I thank you now that you're releasing the breakout anointing even the word itself oh God will begin to prophesy to them even like a person has to break out of a prison break out of a cell God calls us to break out of those things that have us in captivity calls us to break out of the cells and the prisons oh God of strife calls us to break out of the cells and prisons of loneliness calls us to break out of the cells and prisons of hurt cause us to break out now God release the anointing cause us to break out of those unhealthy relationships those ungodly soul ties oh God we thank you for deliverance we thank you for breakthrough we thank you God because you are the God that will destroy the yoke oh God and you will break every fetter over our lives Lord God we thank you for healing we thank you for peace. We thank you for hope. Lord, some sing that we're praying for healing in their body. Lord God, we thank you right now that we expect a testimony and miracles of healing in the body, oh God. Lord God, they will go back to the doctor, Lord God, next week, and they will have a report, Lord God, that the they don't know what's wrong, but something has shifted in their body. Lord, we thank you now. Lord, you are a God of miracles and we stand on your word. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that those who are believing for um, peace to be in their home, oh God, I thank you now that the, the God of peace, you are Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace, that you will even visit their homes even now, oh God, and peace will begin to shift in the atmosphere, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for um, coming against that spirit of fear. We're breaking out of that cycle of fear, the fear of the what if, the fear of the unknown, the fear if it, what, if it doesn't work, the fear of what if I fail, the fear of what if nobody likes it, the fear of being accepted. God, we break those strongholds now in the name of Jesus. And we release the peace. We release the courage. We release the boldness. Lord God, we release the conqueror that you have put inside of us, oh God. And we thank you for your word. And we bless you. I'm telling you, ooh, glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. God wants you to just grab hold to it like a bulldog and don't let it go. 
whatever he told you because it is your breakout time. But a breakout is forceful. A breakout is going to take you getting a little dirty. A breakout is going to take you doing something that you've probably never done before. A breakout is going to cause your faith to rise. God is causing you to jump off the cliff and you ain't got a parachute. God said it's time to jump. It is time to leap. You want breakout, but you want breakout in comfort. You want breakout in an already made plan. You want breakout on surety. And where God is calling you to walk in, it's an unsure place. It's a rocky place. It's a dark dark place. It's an unfamiliar place. It's an unknown place, but you can break out. Let's break the cycles, ladies. Let's break the cycles, gentlemen. So I thank you so much for, for jumping on. You can watch uh, the replay. And if you want to watch part one, just so that you're caught up on the series, you can go on my YouTube channel and do that or on the Facebook page. But we are so excited about the Flawless by God's Design Women Conference. If you haven't registered, do not wait. Do not wait because we will set out we sold out last year um and so i'm i just know that god is going to do it again um and so you want a vendor spot you go ahead and do that too but you be blessed i love you i i love you more i i'm praying for you um and i just thank god for you go ahead and tag a friend um uh, yes, 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 Patricia. You got to learn how to break out of being comfortable. Um, you know, we don't want to be, we, we have to break out of that comfort zone. And so I'm going to challenge you. Some of you like to watch and glean and you don't share anything. I need you to share it. I know we all, I have several friends right now that I'm going to tag and share. I'm like, girl, watch the replay because it's, it's, it's steps. God is very a God of order and he does things systematically. And there is a formula of breakout um, that we have to watch. There's a pattern of obedience that when you're obedient to God, baby, he will open the heavens for you. He will open the heavens for you. Yes. Yes, yes, yeah. I love that. Be comfortable and being uncomfortable. Yes, because with God, you just never know what you're going to do. So be blessed. I I can't wait to see you at the Flawless by God's Design Conference, September 29th in the beautiful city of Ontario. If you're flying in, because we do have ladies that are flying in, you can stay at the Double Tree, um, or if you want to find uh, more um, affordable accommodations, there's several um, 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 hotels in the surrounding area, and you can fly into Ontario airport it's literally a shuttle from the airport to the hotel so we have thought about you uh, for those who are flying in we have ladies coming from Chicago Michigan um, and hopefully Houston we've gotten some confirmation so it's going to be amazing you don't want to miss it well I love you God bless you and have a great night